This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and I'll tell you all about that in a little while. But for now, let's focus our attention on Brightburn, a movie that asks the question, what if Superman was bullied in high school? Why are you always talking about maggots? Must be one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Brightburn was directed by David Yurovesky, best known for his work on, uh, The Hive? This is a movie and it counts because he made it and maybe some people watched it. The plot of Brightburn, and we will now be moving into heavy spoiler territory, is about Brandon Breyer, a seemingly normal boy living in small town America. However, over time, it's revealed that his parents actually found Brandon in a crashed spaceship near their house and decided to raise him as their own. They keep the ship in the barn, and one night, when Brandon is having fun, fun, sleepy time, the ship calls to him. It tells him to take the world. Take the world. Apparently, Brandon's real parents sent him to Earth because they couldn't be bothered to raise him themselves. The Polistis sulcifer is what's called a brood parasite. They've lost the ability to make nests, so they use brute force to make other wasp species raise their young. Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Brandon learns that he has some extraordinary abilities that definitely have no similarities to Superman and uses them to get revenge on the people who have slighted him. His adopted parents grossly mishandle the situation and between being bullied at school, his inept parents and the urgings of the ship, Brandon decides to become the worst thing imaginable. A scary movie cliche. Gotcha. Scared you. Scared you. Brandon eventually becomes a full-on slaughter enthusiast. Then he murders his parents, and the film ends with a montage of Brandon bringing on the apocalypse. In my opinion, Brightburn is a great concept that stumbled on the execution, mostly because there are several ways Brandon could have been dissuaded or eliminated before he becomes a supervillain, and the tragic events of the film could have been entirely avoided. But before we can talk about those solutions, first we need to outline Brandon's powers and weaknesses as well as the specific conditions of the scenario so that everyone is on the same page. Then we can talk about how to beat Brandon Breyer from Brightburn. Brandon has many abilities that he uses to terrorize his victims, and I think you'll find them incredibly familiar. He first learns that he has super strength, tossing away this lawnmower like I toss out celery, because I always had the best intention when I bought the celery. I think this week I'm gonna turn it around and actually eat healthy for once. But then the week goes by and I've spent more money on pizza delivery than Mr. Beast spends on just one of his YouTube videos. So now I'm looking at the celery a week later and I forgot to put a wet paper towel in there. So now they're all bendy and rubbery and it's pathetic because what I really see when I look at this celery is my own incompetent willpower, which is just as bendable and week as this now inedible celery. So I throw the celery away in shame, but the next week, do I not buy the celery because I know I won't eat it? Of course not! I buy the celery anyways because I still have the naive belief that this week, this is the week I'm gonna eat the celery. And then I do the exact same goddamn thing and I don't eat the fucking celery because I'm a fucking moron! That's how Brandon throws this lawnmower! Only moments later, Brandon finds out he's also invulnerable by sticking his hands into it. We learn that he has super speed when he he draws his symbol in the windows of this sad food store. That symbol, by the way, is just his initials, BB, for Brandon Briars, which is, you know, super cool. Respect. He has heat vision, just like another popular super person who is a man, and can also change into his costume in an instant. Lastly, he has a somewhat vague ability that messes with electrical devices such as lights and radios, but it's unclear if this is Brandon's ability or caused by the ship in the barn, or both. The only thing capable of injuring Brandon is the ship itself, since it came from his home planet. You could say it's his, uh, <laughs> his kryptonite. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. No, but seriously, it functions exactly like kryptonite. With the exception of the electric powers, Brandon's abilities are essentially cut and pasted straight off of Superman, which is personally what drew me to the movie in the first place. Brightburn is a shot-for-shot -shot retelling of Superman's origin story if Superman were destined for evil. The similarities are so numerous that I'm curious as to whether Brightburn could be considered a breach of copyright, because Warner Brothers, who owns the film rights to Superman, had nothing to do with Brightburn, nor 
nor did the director ever ask permission to use Superman's qualities. Well, the first question I'm sure you got it a million times is that um, how, are you, how are you guys legally able to do this movie? Um, uh, 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 characters, uh, um, 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 you know, so. That's what sold it to, I mean, to us, Riley is yeah. like the, the most massive Superman fan. Superman he fan. comes running into me, running in and saying, listen, there's a trailer out there right now, it's crazy. And he's like, it's dark Superman, it's crazy. Did you have any correspondence or did you talk to Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment at all about this? Uh, n there was no, there was no legal problems at all. And do you dislike it being called Dark Superman um, by the fans? Well, I've, I, I, I've, I don't know who you guys keep saying this super person thing. I've never heard of that person. <laughs> In any case, the only powers that Superman has, but Brandon does not, are super breath, X-ray vision, and super hearing, or at least he never uses these powers in the film. As for the scenario that the film presents, there are few other important factors to consider. Brandon always had these powers, but the film is somewhat misleading, suggesting that Brandon only got his powers after the ship summoned him, when in reality he had them the whole time. He may look like us and sound like us, but he's never bled. Not once in his whole life. This means that killing Brandon at any point in his life would be incredibly difficult because his body is essentially indestructible. The film takes place in the fictional town of Brightburn somewhere near southeast Kansas. But this is simply to imitate the origins of Superman and does not play any meaningful role in the scenario. Now I'd love to tell you all about the ways to beat Brightburn, but I'd love to tell you even more all about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. I want to include more live video in my work, so I took Ryan Booth's class on cinematography. I used that lesson to craft this masterpiece of celery shots. I think my genius speaks for itself, but I probably couldn't have done it without Skillshare. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to anyone who clicks the link in the description box, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. They're helping to support this channel, so please give them some love by clicking the link below. So, how do we beat Brandon Breyer from Brightburn? There are several possible solutions, some of which can be used in conjunction with each other. The first is pretty simple. Don't raise an alien baby as your own. Let this be a very important lesson for everyone. If you find a crashed alien spaceship in the woods with a baby inside of it, you're not in fact obligated to raise it as your own child. If I were to encounter an alien baby in the woods, I would probably do one of two things. I would either immediately call the authorities or just as likely I would simply walk away and pretend I didn't see anything. If the Briars had called the authorities, assumedly the government would have taken Brandon and studied him. The government would have studied the ship and possibly discovered something about it, like where it came from or what its purpose was. They would be far more likely to discover that Brandon is a threat. The government would also be more likely to figure out what Brandon's weakness is. Plus, if the government were hiding an alien baby, at least people would have had a good reason to storm Area 51. The government might even even find a way to stop Brandon from becoming a supervillain and instead raise him to become a force for good in the world. Now some of you may argue that having a Superman raised and controlled by the US military wouldn't be a great outcome either, but it would probably be a better outcome than this. I would much rather that an alien baby with godlike powers be in the hands of the military rather than some farmers in Kansas, but hey, that's just me. The other option would be to just leave Brandon there and pretend you never saw anything. The area of Kansas where Brandon landed had a population density of 5.9 people per square mile, and the movie doesn't give any indication that anyone else either found the crash site or inquired about it. The residents did see the ship streak across the sky, but they did not know it landed. The official story was that Brandon was adopted and no one questions that narrative, which means that if the Briars had left Brandon in the forest, no one else would have found him and he would have starved to death. And that would have been problem solved right there. Unfortunately, it's not a guarantee, because if Brandon is indeed meant to be a knockoff Superman, then we have a problem, because Superman doesn't actually need to eat as long as he gets enough sunlight per day. Superman does eat food, but it's more of a hobby than an actual 
biological requirement. The only time Superman needs to eat is when he's low on sunlight. Brandon is shown eating several times throughout the film, but just because he can eat doesn't mean he needs to. So if the Briars had left Brandon in the woods, it's possible he would still survive if he's powered by the sun just like Superman. A less drastic method of beating Brandon would be to just talk to him. The biggest frustration I had with this film is that no one seems to talk to anyone about anything. Brandon destroys the lawnmower, but no one asks him about it or apparently even notices. Kyle sees Brandon chewing on a fork at breakfast, but he never shares this information with Tori, nor does he even talk to Brandon about it. After Brandon crushes Caitlin's hand, Kyle and Tori never ask him about it and pretend like nothing happened. Brandon then kills all the chickens in the chicken coop for some reason, and Kyle knows it it was him, but never broaches the subject with Brandon. The school counselor, Meredith, who happens to be Tori's sister, does sit down to talk to Brandon. Do you feel bad about what you did to Caitlin? Sometimes when bad things happen to people, it's for a good reason. But when he tells her some very disturbing things, instead of doing what counselors are supposed to do and help Brandon work through his issues, she instead threatens to tattle on him to Tori and to the police, but does neither of those things anyways. I'm supposed to update the sheriff tomorrow and I have to be honest with him. Lastly, at the end of the film, Brandon literally asks Tori for help, but instead she tries to kill him. He says that he wants to do good. I want to do good, Mom. I do. <laughs> There were at least nine times in this film that Tori, Kyle, or Meredith could have tried to help Brandon with what he was going through and stopped him from bringing on the apocalypse. All they needed to do was have an honest conversation about who he is, what he's feeling, and what they can do to help him. There was a real chance here to turn it around, but no one stood up to properly counsel Brandon. If they had done so, I believe they could have prevented Brandon from becoming a supervillain. The totally opposite approach they could have taken would be to decisively kill Brandon. After he crushes Caitlin's hand, Tori discovers that the ship is able to hurt Brandon, and at the end of the film, she tears a piece off the ship to try to kill him. This doesn't work because by this point in the movie, Kyle already tried to kill him, so naturally he's ready for it when Tori tries to do the same. It was incredibly stupid of Kyle to try to kill Brandon when he already knew that Brandon was indestructible. He may look like us and sound like us, but he's never bled. Not once in his whole life. However, Tori never told Kyle that the ship is able to hurt Brandon. So again, the solution just comes from the characters actually talking to each other. If Tori had told Kyle that the ship is able to hurt him, Kyle could have taken the metal from the ship, melted it or shaped it into a bullet, and then take Brandon hunting just like they did in the movie, except this time, the bullet actually would have killed him. If Tori had just shared this vital information with Kyle, Brandon would have been stopped well before he brings on the apocalypse. In the end, it doesn't actually matter if they try to kill him or save him, as long as they commit to one or the other. Indecision is ultimately what ends up killing Kyle and Tori, but the best solution by a long shot is also the simplest and the least risky. All they need to do is destroy the ship. In the second solution, I propose that they could have just talked to Brandon in order to prevent him from becoming a supervillain, but I neglected to mention, entirely for dramatic effect, that throughout the movie, Movie, the ship is actively encouraging Brandon and telling him to destroy the world. Talking to him still could have worked since Brandon was still asking for help at the end of the film, so he wasn't entirely brainwashed, but the root cause of Brandon's evil deeds was the ship encouraging him to do evil. The ship is basically the equivalent of the Flame King in Adventure Time. Evil, 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 evil. Evil, 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 evil. So all they need to do is destroy the ship. They should have done so when they first got Brandon, and they definitely should have done so the first time Tori learns that the ship was calling to him. We know that the ship can be destroyed because Tori literally rips a piece off of it near the end of the film. It is not indestructible. If they destroy the ship, then Brandon won't be encouraged to become a psychopathic mass murderer. That being said, they should still talk to Brandon and tell him about his origins, but maybe tell him that the ship was destroyed on impact. Without the influence of the 
relationship, Brandon would have had a childhood much like Superman's and the crisis would have been entirely averted. But if you disagree and you think that I got something wrong or that you have a much better idea to beat Brandon, please let us all know about it in the comments. If you're interested in this kind of Superman except he's bad story, then I would highly recommend a comic book series called Irredeemable in which a nearly omnipotent superhero suddenly turns evil. This video would not have been possible without the support of my patrons, and if you want to be as cool as them, head on over to patreon.com slash filmherald. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald. Thank <laughs> you.